I have something stupid. So you know how we talk about regularly sarcasm often gets missed? No. Yeah. Oh, yes. So if you're not familiar with The Onion. Ogres like it, and they like it. This is what they wrote after the ruling of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. This is The Onion is a sarcasm paper. In a touching moment following Friday's Supreme Court 5-4 decision overruling Roe v. Wade and eliminating the constitutional right to an abortion, Justices Brett Kavanaugh and Clarence Thomas reportedly championed the better future they'd created for the next generation of rapists. Quote, we did it, my friend. We've been waiting decades for this moment, a visibly teary-eyed Kavanaugh was overheard saying to Thomas as the two congratulated each other on their work to make the world a better and safer place for perpetrators of sexual assault. Today we celebrate those who'll come after us, who will be able to rape to their heart's content. No one will be able to stop them, whether it's spousal sexual assault, statutory rape, or simply gang raping a stranger. Future generations will have the full backing of the law. That's America. Real article. Just. Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Rexy. It's Corbin. I'm Brett Kavanaugh. Ooh, gross. Get out of my house. <laughs> and you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter account. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button. Ah, sarcasm. Today, it's today, what's for breakfast. Today we got a, uh, we, we've seen some of their stuff, the Corridor Crew. They break down VFX. We've seen, you've seen I remember that. them. Uh, but they are breaking down RRR. RRR? Yes. Okay. So they break the VFX break down Tollywood bad and great CGI. So they watched RRR and they're gonna break down cool. RRR. Cool. Obviously, and they're gonna know stuff we don't. If you haven't seen RRR, go watch RRR. Go watch it. But yeah, they, their background they do this. Oh so yeah, they they'll see stuff. That is their job. We won't be able to see. Yeah, they're really smart. Big YouTube yep. channel. Um, always fun. Here cool. we go. <laughs> this is like a trademark Bollywood and Hollywood shot. Animating animals is probably one of the hardest things to do. You don't have like reference of a tiger, like, you know, flipping from flipping <laughs> over. <laughs> For as ridiculous as certain scenes can get, this one is actually pretty believable. That looks great. Oh, the fire looks Dude, so that's so smart. That's so smart. Welcome to another episode Damn of Visual it. Effects Artists React. And this week, something very special for you. The worldwide phenomenon, the global blockbuster from South Indian cinema that has swept the world. Yep. R. 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 For me, it actually sums up and utilizes all these crazy things you see in Bollywood and Hollywood movies for the purpose of telling a better story. Like the action is crazy, it is out of the world, but also it's focused on storytelling. It's entertaining because it makes the characters cooler. The songs, the dances, they're not just random music videos dropped into the movie, they are story beats. And oh my God, it synthesizes Ser seriously. all of the elements that you think about when you think about Bollywood movies as these sort of- That's not a Bollywood movie, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it hyper focuses it. I, I've seen two films in theaters, like so far into 2022. Those two films are RRR and RRR. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in America, RRR is on Netflix, but it's in Hindi, not its original language. You try to watch it. Shout out to you, you can, for knowing that. In the and, and he said, watch, watch it in a theater in the original language. Yes. So yes. You have, to, you have to disregard some stuff. You have to throw away the best yes. of what you know about films. Take that bag of Oscars. Throw in the dumpster. Get, get trash. out of here. Yeah. Throw away. Trash. So with that, let's dive into RRR. <laughs> interview they said 2,000 extras in this scene. Cool. Indian films have very good crowd work and extra work. There's yes really they do. There's a breakdown of the scene too which shows you just excellent use of crowds. Wow. Look at that. Oh that's really clever. Oh wait so it's not even full CG crowds. We're talking about like plates of crowds mm. too. Yeah they really committed to like have some real stuff in there. This is a blend of virtual. Yep. Yeah everybody in the, against the fence is real because they're interacting right. with a real object but right behind them by about 10 people back you get into CG people and composited people. <laughs> so he's been ordered to arrest one guy in this crowd of thousands. Yep. As ridiculous as certain scenes are, 
games can get in this film and others, this one is actually pretty believable. Like, <laughs> yeah. you watch this guy go through the crowd, and he, you're convinced that he's actually, like, controlling this. What's great is also the shot design here lets you, like, you really, even in the wide, you catch exactly where he is. Which is crazy to be able to pull that off. Yeah. To be able to easily see him. Like, notice how everybody in the crowd yeah, to is easily wearing headwear except for him. Right and there. great cutaways here to emphasize what's happening, right? So this punch here, boom, right? <laughs> a little bit of CG blood to just emphasize each of these single hits. A tiny thing I noticed on my fourth rewatch of this was um, <laughs> to make the crowd feel bigger, you have, like, you have varying heights. It might be only, like, two, three layers of people deep. Yes. But then even further, right, see, the, you get little bits of the flag even further yeah. back, and you're like, Oh, that's a really just a clever way of implying more depth, right? Even though you won't visually see it by yeah. having some stuff higher up. You're right. I mean, it really seems like they're committed to having really practical stuff in the foreground at almost all times. Yeah, all the stuff that your eye is focusing on. It's all about the particulate and the smoke in the air that really blends it out. This movie is so the good. Slow-mo here is very much you know, reminiscent of, I think, what John Woo does so well, which is using slow-mo as a means to emphasize and draw out beats. And it's like over and over again, the use and of Gibson speed does it too. and speed ramping. And rhythm too, like we're slow, slow, he's hurt. And then now that he's refreshed, he gets one breath, gentle push in, getting that rhythm back. And, oh, right. boom, and now we're back boom, in. Boom, 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 and the rhythm's fast again. Yeah. He's 100% ready Gotta to go. Shot. I love it. <laughs> Pause for a second on that. Now, is that comp? Yeah. That's a comp. That's definitely a comp. Wait, I've seen so many eyeball reflection shots <laughs> or sunglass reflection shots in these types of films. But this is probably the best one because, first off, they're like distorting it. It looks like it's reflecting on a curved surface yep. properly. The like eyebrows, on his eyelashes, the eye eyelashes. There's so much detail put in. Incredible. It to the point where it's like, is that 100% real? His eye would have to be a chrome ball. <laughs> his pupil would have to be a chrome ball to you get see that a shot. camera in the reflection, too, also. Oh, you would, you would, you're right. Yeah. This single shot still telling the story of the scenes. It is one person against a huge crowd and him intimidating, right? Yeah. It's almost POV, but you're seeing it through his, it's just incredible. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. One glance and that's all he needs to push him back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look how many asses were kicked. <laughs> 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 all right, we've introduced Ron. Hell yeah. This is, by the way, maybe the two greatest character introductions <laughs> in the movie I've ever seen. Dude, this introduction is so dope. And remember, too, in the language of the movie, they both represent the two elements, right? So Rom's supposed to be fire, and then NTR's supposed to be water. Yeah, he had the torch that hits the yep. gate before he reveals him. Yep, yep. And here, and then water here it's like it starts on a reflection before we turn around. That's a fun shot. It's weird, this blood looks perfectly real at first, and then it gets a little CG at the end. It's totally, there's so much CG blood drips in this movie. It's yeah, that's true. It's probably an element they poured down like something and comped it. One of the things that's really interesting due to, you know, sort of the cultural sensitivities towards animals. Animals in these movies are all CG, right? They don't mess with like, you know, the possibility of harm to any animals. They didn't used to. By the way, you guys noticed that he turned into a CG runner? He turned runner? into a CG yeah, runner, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that little blend there, there's a blend. That's real, yeah, real, real and then real, it's CG real, run. And then a little Texas switch to yep. CG double. Dude, what? <laughs> oh. Ooh, what a shot. And what's great about slow-mo, by the way, is in the world of slow-mo, we don't have any visual context for what should look right. Yeah. So you can get away with animation to just emphasize like the swipe or whatever. Even if you like play that back at normal speed, it might look weird, but it doesn't matter because it works in the slow-mo context. So something that's like really nice here, but when they hit the ground, there's a bunch of CG leaves. Boom, right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, And that yeah. Like, really sells the contact. Whoa. Yeah, those are they, nice. they put a lot of effort into these tiger shots. Animating animals is probably one of the hardest things to do. Like, if you're doing a human being, it's like, oh, I need even to dance and do this weird move. It's like, well, I can look in a mirror or a corner yeah, of exactly. the phone. <laughs> you don't have, like, reference of a tiger, like, you know. Flipping from one thing over. The, yeah. The tiger doing a semi-truck crash from the dark night. <laughs> 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 this is a one-shot that's janky. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the punch zoom into a different perspective. I <laughs> love this though. Well, I mean, there's other shots of Jackie, but look like, how oh, good this shot oh, looks. That shot looks excellent. Yeah, now. it does. 
So is this. Ah, when he gets right up face to face. Like setup for like a man versus a tiger. He needs to stay calm. Yeah. He needs to, stay calm. He needs to roar back. Yes. It never gets old. The tension of that shot is incredible too, right? Because he's in full flux, but the whole theater is losing their minds. Yes. Like, yes. Like, this scratches all the itch that a, like the best WWE matches scratch. Yep. Yes. Yes. Agreed. There's parts like this that are so well done that are easily on par, if not better than. Like, that's great. That yeah, is a great shot. Yeah. It's also shot choice too because. There's an angle where that shot is almost impossible to do, right? Like, but then if you're coming behind and you're letting the foreground be the tiger, you can get away with not necessarily being exactly where is his hand position into it, because it's covered, right? I have to imagine one of the hardest things for the VFX team and the director here in this scene was have it where it's like the tiger's falling asleep, it's struggling, but it's still scratching. It's still him scratching a little bit. Enough right. that it really hurts, but not enough yeah, that it ruins yeah, it. Like yeah, you, you need, need to hit that story beat. Because it needs to communicate that it's still <laughs> dangerous. Right. Because there's a movie where you like you go see boom, hits a tranquilized dart and boom, it's down, right? Yeah. It's like, no, 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 the struggle continues still. There is already a built-in suspension of disbelief whenever we choose to watch a movie. If the purpose of the shot is like the tiger's chasing him and it's not selling a big story beat, then it's like, okay, it, it literally doesn't matter as much compared to the story beat here where he's gonna cradle it. That you can't be distracted by, oh, this looks bad. You can forgive it because you're forgiving the movie because it's a movie. Yeah. I mean, VFX is almost like a really abstracted version of acting, where it's like, when you're in the middle of action, the acting's not super important. But when like an actor is like having a very intimate moment with another yes. actor, it's like, you can't get distracted by bad exactly. acting. Right. Right. This movie did an incredible job of making sure to focus their strengths yes. to the point that they actually need it. Yes. They do that for over 2,800 VFX shots. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's why That's some insane. of the spots where you notice something are completely forgiving. Because they're ancillary. It's a nice train. That's CG, 100% CG, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that that whole sequence. That we just saw was 100% CG. Okay, but like I saw they made miniatures for this whole train. Oh, too. we'll get to that. You only make miniatures when you want to blow them up. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, classic. Gotta hit the sparks. The sparks from the brakes. Wait, so the fire shots of the miniatures? Because obviously we got CG fire CG, up here. CG fire, yeah. But then this next shot is quite a nice That's nice miniature. That was great. Oh, that, fluff, that fire looks so Dude, that's so, so smart. That's so smart. All right, we have a CG train for the close-ups, and then we have a miniature for the destruction and the physics of it. Usually, it's either backwards or, like, flipped, or, like, completely one or the other. Yeah. I've never seen the use of that, where we're going to use CG for everything except for when physics takes over. Right? That's a real size right there, full-size thing. This is all wire work. Did they just take yep. Yeah, but this is all in camera here, except for the background, which is Compton. One of the tricks I always feel like uh, that I see is that explosions are very bright, and oftentimes real explosions will blow out. Like you got elements of pure white in there. Yeah, look at that. But then CG explosions, every VFX artist is like, but I put all this effort in these flames. That's like the biggest gripe. Nigo mentions it all the time too. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like, it's like the classic Marvel movie explosion where you just have like a super detailed and flat. That explosion. <laughs> it's like just brown. Keep in mind, if you're compositing an explosion, that is exactly what you want to simulate to make it look real. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right when the flames are at, the, at his hands, you get the proper halation. Oh, yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper oh, halation wow. Oh. I did not oh, notice that. Halation? halation, yeah. It's, it's not called a uh, light wrap or whatever. I'm blue. I think halation is like the technical, like, okay. Optics That's terminal. insane. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Boom. That is attention to detail is amazing. Lens. Halation is when it hits your film and causes the silver crystals next to where the light is hitting to also change color and expose. Oh, because it spills out on the sensor yeah. and on the film? On film. Save them! Yeah, the movie gets me so pumped. Is game recognizing game? Game recognizing game? <laughs> game. <laughs> yep. Two hand signals and like, I'm just with you. Okay. Okay. Well, let's rock and roll. And now here's like, all right. Oh, whoop, 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 yes. Whoop, whoop, yes. Whoop. <laughs> you can't start a horse without having to start. <laughs> yes, right. The whole plan, Dude, by the, the way. The torque on that horse is so. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's still more secrets left to this plan that we don't know yet. See that? That? Oh. That is not style. That is substance. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they do it 
with such graceful positions. Which obviously one leg are. bent forward. <laughs> yeah, the whole time you're like, what? This seems excessive. Why? That's what's a little with excessive. The flag? This seems. What is the style with the flag? Any other Bollywood and Tollywood movie would just be style with the flag. You oh. fool! You fool! What's happening here? You keep asking, what is the with the white flag? Is wet? Why? What would it? There's only one answer, and that's. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You tell me that there's not a greater wingman move than knowing exactly. that buddy is going to need to protect himself. And he got it wet first. Yeah. And then the build. It's the, the best. Build here. And then he's. Like, ah! 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 There we go. Dun, 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 dun. It's the best buddy action film ever. <laughs> Tyler! Oh, so how long are we in this movie? So how far is it? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. minutes. Yep. yep. And now the main title hits. I pointed that <laughs> out when we watched it in theaters. It transitions into the logo of the film. Oh, it's so it good. Like, hey, we acknowledge that what we just did was kind of ridiculous. The crazy. greatest buddy uh, film yeah. of all time. They didn't put them up there. Oh. They didn't have to, but they did. Wait, are they actually holding hands, dude? Wait, hold on. Stop. Please. No. They're, they're holding hands. They're oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, maybe there could be a cable connecting them that's, like, either on the back of their wrists. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that's a CG horse in that shot right there. So that's a CG horse? Oh, that's a CG it has horse. to stop. It has to stop and let them go off. Yeah. Dude, check out the CG horse rig. Yo! Ah! <laughs> Yo, what? Look at his little bike trainer wheels thing. So you can do his, like, move oh, every time. Turn. Yeah. So the actor doesn't have to, like, risk awesome. himself. There is an incredible scene. Ah. Dance number, if you will. It's the best! Do not to. However... We can't include it on this episode on YouTube or else well, we'll get flagged. So yep. if you want to welcome to our live to coraldigital.com and watch the extended version. It's the best. We, it it's is. the greatest dance sequence in cinematic history. <laughs> I won't argue. Check it out. Yeah. Boom, boom, CG. Yeah, no. yeah. Greatest yeah. interval yeah. scene of all time. Flip just uh, looked pretty good. I don't know. You tell me. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Get out! Oh, oh, yes. What a good payoff. The whole zoo. He finally makes his move. He attacks the British, and he does it with all the creatures he's been capturing in the forest. So this is a very John Woo kind of Hong Kong cinema thing here, where <laughs> we're jumping through time, right? Like, this is out of time. We're taking our beat here. We're taking a long time here, right? And now we're coming back to it. So all that stuff, again, is like the sort of, the sort of cutting in a way that is emphasizing emotion over temporal logistics. It's anime. It's anime. <laughs> Get off me. <laughs> yeah. And that some guy just does the perfect, perfect flip. Yeah. Yep. It, what, that's called like a gainer, right? Or something? A header. A header? A header, yeah. Like you can feel like the tension of the animation like almost breaking. The header actually brings it around yeah, yeah, and, yeah and the animation of that leopard spinning around like it fits can we just pause for one second to just acknowledge and appreciate the filmmaking artistry that goes into deciding not to do this whole sequence as a stupid one -er. <laughs> the i'm tired of stupid one -ers. we're at a point right where people know there are cuts in one -ers. like it's not cool it's not cool anymore stop with the useless <laughs> boring one -ers. filmmakers i'm telling you this right now you're not cool for doing a one <laughs> nobody thinks it's cool and nobody likes it yeah because of that nobody boring. likes you boring. Or your stop doing boring one super boring stop doing <laughs> a good one -er, there's plenty of good one out there yep but they're used to like bridge together and again they don't overstay their welcome right for the purposes. family man does it amazingly yeah what to show the chaos and sort of the scope so did Mirza Pern. Right? The yeah. purpose of this is the range of animals, the, even the horseback sort of folks can't even handle it, and the punctuation mark, fire. and we're starting a fire. That's like a technical wonder. But like they're cutting out of it by the certain point. I'm done! I'm done! Uh-oh. What I mean. Here comes show. fire! Love the detail that like the, the power of these horses are gonna even part like right the, the two most dangerous animals that you've seen up until this point artificially keeping him very dark yeah. in the front right there's even this next shot here it's almost completely like, that's that's completely ridiculous right that's almost <laughs> yeah. 300 right? like shot from Sin City almost but like yeah but the purpose is this dark we're gonna flip this get a low angle of our guy walking up. yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is this is like a trademark Bollywood and Hollywood shot. Something flipping in slow motion above a cop. This is a trademark shot. And then of course not wrong. Oh, the wheel hit him. Yeah. <laughs> it's this so satisfying. Here, I think is 
one of the most sublime the water shot, shot i've ever had which is the key shot oh like, yeah he falls out of his hand it was so close it was literally in his grasp he's coming in and out of focus and then like you can track the moment it goes and then he's gonna come into focus one more time and now his look is different right <laughs> and now you know it's like no game on each other <laughs> <laughs> How hard the water i love the water sequence oh. it's almost a jump cut to yeah. emphasize the speed of it this is that dragon ball z action now where like very singular powerful strikes here good crisp choreo yeah the emphasis on the hits like low angle but like just great choreo there and using smoke that's backlit behind them so you can silhouette them and read their body shapes ah clever good point yeah <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, fire. Show yes. me his water. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kudos to the VFX artist on that shot. Every single time I see it, that little arc of the background rocket over Rom's head. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's like sometimes you're just like, you know what? Those Bezier curves just hit. <laughs> Those Bezier curves just hit different. <laughs> this is one of the shots where then Bezier curves just hit different. Whoever was placing them knew where to They knew them. exactly. Like, it's like a painting, dude. Yeah. They didn't even have to decide where the, they went. They were like, oh, this is where they belong. Well, that shot could be complete chaos if done incorrectly. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like no, you're watching just like, oh, what the heck? We should pause it here. Showing you the rest of this fight would be a disservice to you. You should go watch the movie. Well hey done. Guys, it's me, Jake, again, here on a giant Bollywood film set, doing things big time. And uh, if there's one thing that everyone keeps telling me around here, it's uh, that credit on a film set is important. You know, and uh, come to think of it, courtesy of today's sponsor, Extra, you can start I think that's building it. credits with Devin today. Now, you Great video. Extra. Great video. They're, Great video. They're, uh... They're very knowledgeable, and it's great to see people that are yep. just like it's great to see directors break down a scene, blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. It's great to see people that know what they're doing break down great stuff or yep. stuff that, that they deem that we you didn't catch that they deem not so great. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to see. Also, uh, we knew about this movie like two years ago. So. Yeah, but that. Get on a level! The average American I know. doesn't even know that Indian cinema exists. I know. Yeah. I know, but <laughs> it's quite a it's kind of crazy though because obviously the rest of America, or, or the, the West in general, right, is just now figuring out about this film. I know. We had been anticipating, anticipating this film yeah. for the past, I'd say two, two years, years, since the the um, the first reveal, poster reveal. Yeah, it was or, a poster reveal, reveal or something. Yeah, and we had been anticipating it and right when it came out we were championing it like yep. crazy uh, and how great this film is and every all, all you see now is just the amount of praise anybody that sees it now is everybody and do not be shocked if can how does it work so if the idiots who are in india uh, that pick for the oscars don't pick it right and i'm not, there might be a better film that comes out i don't know right we're, we're, we're not there yet they can still submit themselves, can they not? Like Parasite did for Best Picture, or no? Uh, yeah, what happened? They can submit themselves for anything they want to submit themselves for. So for foreign, for so, well, no, they that has to be submitted through the country. Through the country, correct. Gotcha. Um, that but, would be my only hurdle currently. Yeah. Um, and and I, I I said it on Twitter, but I was like, I don't see how you can't nominate this film currently. No, uh, we're halfway I, through the year, I, and it's the best film of the year. In terms of just the totality of it. and how good it is, you can argue whether it's the Oscar-type worthy movie, whatever. But I will, if there's something that the Oscars have been accused of, and for the most part rightfully so, is that they haven't given enough attention other than in the visual effects and, and you know, uh, editing things, sound is action films. Mm -hmm. When many people have thought for a while that there's a lot. It started with Dark Knight, and it's it's been continuing. There's been some great performances. There's been some great stories, and they're by far the more popular films that people go to see. It would be very cool, and I mean, it was it's what I'm rooting for. Unless another film comes out that I see that I think is a better candidate. I would love to see this there, be the there, entry. There has not been a um, Sardar Udam, Great Indian Kitchen, 
this year. May, the closest I would well, say. Well, that was is, last year. I know. I'm saying yeah. the, for that would replace this for India. Oh. Uh, this year there hasn't, outside of maybe The Last Farmers, the closest I would consider to something that would be an Oscar type film. Type film. Even though obviously this is a very different type film. But I think in terms, if, if, if your job is that the Oscar nominating committee for India is to get the nomination. Correct. The West is already crazy about it. Why not just send it? I just don't. <laughs> Sincerely. The only reason they wouldn't is because, and sadly this is the case throughout all industries of all countries, is too often decisions are made about money or political power. And, and I don't mean that in terms of politics of a country. I mean the politics of the industry. Yeah. And, and sadly, some things get chosen that shouldn't have been chosen, and some things get specifically ignored, having nothing to do with artistry. I but, think, I think uh, you could get a lot of people on board with being excited. You, you would. RRR nominated for Best Foreign Film. I mean, you could even it, argue that it could be Best Picture. <laughs> it, might, it might. If it were nominated, there would be so many people here it might be the single most excited Americans have been for the nomination of an international film that I could ever remember. Because so many – I can't remember an international film being seen way before Oscars mm -hmm. that so many people are excited about. People got excited about pa Parasite because they got word about the film festivals and then they got word about all the nominations and then they went and saw it even post-Oscars. Yeah. This is – Six months before nominations come out. Yeah, this is different too. People are going crazy. Because it's not the festival type. It's different. Correct. Word of mouth. Getting how good and fun this film is. And that, a film that is made for entertainment value yeah. has just as much merit as a film that is made for Oscar artistic value. It's one of the reasons I think another candidate in just the best picture sequence, especially since you have a 10 picture category, is it's an action film. There's probably no Oscar nominations, but it doesn't matter. Maverick is going to be one of the best films of the year. Not just the most successful. It's going to be one of the best films of the year. So if you could nominate, it'd be really cool to see Maverick and then see this. It would be a nice turning point of the Academy. And you know us, our creme de la creme is going to be the artsy films. But there's a place for movies like this. Mm -hmm. A place for this in the awards conversations. Absolutely. And I just, I just hate that also. The one that everybody's seeing is on Netflix in Hindi. I, I just, know, and I love that they mentioned about that because I, I don't understand. I don't why understand you anything other than the original language. At the Lemelay Theater here, which plays a lot of international films on their billboard and on their website, it says underneath, "Not afraid of subtitles," and I wish everybody felt that way. Anyways, great video. Great video. Uh, please let us know what are the videos we can react to, and uh, what should be the next of their videos we should watch down below. Just...